Hello and welcome. Today is going to be some uh, more practice with the beta function in trigonometric form. So a few simple integrals just to actually see the trigonometric form, which I'm going to write. Perhaps I should really write this somewhere on the side. Let me see a decent color uh, pen. Let's say we use an orange pen. And I'm going to write that the beta of m comma n is in fact equal to zero to pi over two, two lots. Uh, let's put the sign first, because normally we're at the sign. Not that it matters, it's, it's, it's symmetric and uh, it doesn't really matter. Sine theta and cos theta, d theta, this is to the power of two n minus one, and this is to the power of two n minus one. <coughs> Excuse me. And I'm also gonna write the standard recurrence relation which connects beta and gamma, which of course, that's the gamma of M. Very easy to remember this one. So these are the usual results for the beta function. So this particular integral in order to do it the standard way is actually get quite a nightmare because uh, you will either need, um, I don't know, complex numbers or some kind of reduction formula. With a beta function, you just do it in, a few lines. So here it is. We're going to write first of all as a half. Put the two on the inside. That's the two from this bit here. And then I'm going to write the sine of theta and the cos of theta, of course. And somehow when I double something and take away one, I'm going to get a seven. So that's a four. <coughs> so that is times four minus one. That's my power of seven. So it matches that. And of course, for the cause, should be obvious, is two, like, two lots of half, take away one. So this now, the half is of course at the front, is by definition, the beta of this four and this half. So it's four and a half, not four and a half, four comma half. And of course, in order to evaluate it, we're going to gammas. Gamma of four, gamma of a half, divide by the gamma of four and a half, or simply nine over two. <coughs> now, that's a half, rewritten. Um, gamma of four is three factorial. And I'm going to write this again. And I'm just going to remind you a little bit about the gamma function. This is not really part of the beta, but is the recurrence relation that says the gamma of nine over two is the same as seven, one less, seven over two times the gamma of seven over two. And then of course, we repeat the gamma of seven over two, one less. So times five over two times the gamma of five over two. And we can repeat this process times five over two. The next one will be, of course, one less three over two, gamma of three over two. And of course, it will cancel that gamma to the half on the top with one more application. Oops. So that's five over two times three over two. And now one less of that is a half gamma a half. So for this particular one now, that is equal to a half, six, that's three factorial times, we have seven over two times five over two times three over two times a half times the gamma of a half, which of course we know is root pi, but we don't really care here because it will cancel on the numerator. And what do we have in here? That's three, that bit there. And then we got times eight on the top. And um, at the bottom, we're going to have a five times seven times three. So I'm going to write it as 35. That's this bit here, times three. The three will cancel here. You can use a calculator, I guess, but um, I very rarely will use one. So the answer is eight over 35. So very, very simple. I've done a full explanation. Uh, that for somebody who is proficient in beta and gamma, it's a few lines. 
<coughs> and maybe two minutes maximum. Okay, um, let's have a look at another one of these. I might do two or three of these um, integrals today. Oops. Let me just check that the actual thing is in the middle. Yeah, that's okay. So, which integral can we do next? Perhaps something that doesn't have 0 to pi over 2, but it can become perhaps of that particular type. So, let's say we have the integral 0 to pi over 4, and let's say we have the sine cubed of 2x <coughs> times the cos to the 4 of 2x of dx. So for something like that, it's just a simple substitution, first of all, because we need to have the correct limits there. So um, what shall we do? Let's use y. y is equal to 2x. Clearly, my dy will be two lots of dx. And the limits, when x is equal to 0 in there, y will also map to 0. When x is equal to pi over 4, double it, it will go to pi over 2. So this integral will now transform to 0 to pi over 2. And we got sine cubed of y cos to the 4 of y. And my dx, I didn't rearrange it here, but dx is clearly dy over 2. And we can actually, I guess, write this as... Uh, right and a half, zero to pi over two. <laughs> Cos to the four of y, dy. And we really need to create this quantity with this, we need this two first of all. So let's pull another half on outside. And let's write this as sine y I'm going to put the power in a minute, written the correct form. So we can all see what uh, uh, beta we have, dy. So now to have a 3, so we need to add 1, so that's a 4, and then divide by 2. So that's 2 times 2 minus 1. So that is the sine and the cos should be 2 lots of 5 over 2 minus 1. So this will be the beta of 2, comma, beta, of course, the quarter at the front. And we've got beta of 2 and beta of 5 over 2. Recurrence relation, quarter, gamma of 2, gamma of 5 over 2, over um, 2 plus 2 and a half is... Um, Four and a half, so that's nine over two. And this will become a quarter. Gamma of two is one factorial. Um, let me just write it. So that's be a one there, basically. And the gamma of five over two, I'm going to leave it. And I'm going to bring by the recurrence relation I showed you on the previous example, this down to five over two. So it's going to be one less, seven over two times the gamma of 7 over 2, but then I'm to bring it once again down. So it's going to go 5 over 2 times the gamma of 5 over 2. I hope you can see all of this. This will cancel. This is just doesn't make any difference. And when I write this, um, neater, 4 plus 4, uh, not plus 4, 4. Uh, so it's going to be a quarter, 4 on the top. That's 2 times 2, and then we have 35 at the bottom. The 4s will cancel, and this particular integral simply equals 1 over 35. <coughs> Pardon me. And let's say that was quick enough. Let's let's do one more. Let's go the other way. Uh, the other way means basically sort of um, perhaps um, when from pi over 2, we halved it. Let's go and put the pi perhaps in the limits. So, what can we make with this? I mean, nice and simple. Um, perhaps the integral from 0 to pi, and now the arguments need to be half x is if I, It doesn't mean you have to be um, halving or doubling. Of course, it can be uh, other, other quantities as long as the limits sort out. So, uh, let's say we have the sine 
uh, of half x that will sort out the limits and what powers that we use. Let's say we use 5 and 2. Cos squared of half x dx. Again, we need the substitution to get the limits in the correct form 0 to pi over 2. So the substitution will be, of course, let's call this bit y. y is a half x. So my dy is simply a half dx. And the limits, of course, by construction. Now, these are x limits. When x is equal to 0, y also becomes 0. And when x is equal to pi, half of pi is, of course, pi over 2. And the limits sort of themselves out. So that is 0 to pi over 2 sine to the power of 5. So that's uh, that bit there and similar one for the cos. And the dx is going to be two lots of dy. But of course, we need the two there and we got the two. So we have very little to do on this one. So 0 to pi over 2. Let's write this two at the front from the 2dy. And the sine of y and the cos of y we need to know now what beta we have in here. Uh, 5. Add 1 is 6. Divide by 2 is 3. So that's basically 2 times 3 minus 1. So we're looking at this 3. And in order to get a 2, is add 1 is 3. So it's 3 over 2. So it's 2 times 3 over 2 minus 1. So that's the particular beta we're looking for. Use now the gamma the beta to gamma relation. So that's the gamma of the 3 times the gamma of the 3 over 2. And that's 1 and a half. So that's 4 and a half again. So that's the gamma of 9 over 2. Uh, the gamma of 3 is the same as 2 factorial. From that work in the, the gamma function. And this will reduce at the bottom using the gamma recurrence relation. We leave the top as it is because it will cancel again. So that's going to be... <clears throat> the gamma of 3 over 2, and this will reduce 7 over 2, gamma of 7 over 2, times 5 over 2, times the gamma of 5 over 2, times 3 over 2, times the gamma of 3 over 2. These two things will cancel, and 2 factorials are simply 2, 4, 8, 16, and we have 7 times 5 times 3 is 35 times 3, 105. Okay, so that's the third integral, nothing complicated. Um, in a previous lecture, I derived, obviously, this particular. I introduced, first of all, the beta function in a previous lecture. Then I introduced this particular expression in, um, in another lecture. This is, of course, work from the gamma function, including the recurrence relation. So we're building up on the model. Nothing hard today, as you saw. All the integrals are were very, very simple. Okay, I'm going to be signing out, and I'll see you very, very soon. Bye for now.